We've just been on a bit of a, a prayer journey, waiting on the Lord because we, we were seeking fresh fire because we need to take that all of our leads, okay? Heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, amen, in this city. Who wants that? Who believes in that? Amen. Few of us do believe in that, break, but I believe you all do, so we all do. Did, by the way, you guys, did you understand any of what you were saying? Check. She's from Czech, okay, I just wondered, okay. But uh, that, I remember that uh, we met this couple, and this led to, they were living in Hare Hills at the time, and we, we got invited round the home, and everybody in the home got saved, and they had about those kids everywhere, they just had millions of kids, and all the kids got saved, and the kids got baptised in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, and they'd never had any teaching on it. They were just little little kids, uh, Czechoslovakian kids. They received Jesus, laid hands on them, and they just stopped blah, 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 praying in tongues straight away. It was it was crazy. And then the youngest one, I went round, I visited him another night. I visited the family. They had an English neighbour in the house from two doors up, and this lady had sickness and pain. She had arthritis, riddled with arthritis, and this young boy said. He said, pointed at me, and he went, he's like God, ask him to pray for you. Now please, I, I, I'm not going around saying I'm God, I'm not. But you know, if you're a Christian, you are meant to be like God, <laughs> in the name of Jesus, i.e. you are a son, a son, I said, no, I'm careful here, yeah? a son of God. You are a daughter of God. And, and, I, and I was careful in front of the whole room, I said, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> but I, this lady got completely set free and delivered, and uh, it's, a, it's a powerful time, so look, the power of the gospel is, 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 is powerful, okay, thank you Lord, I just want to pray because, you know, there's all kinds of um, things to push through in the realm of the spirit to deal with the unbelief etc etc and so so that we can see the kingdom of god established so lord i pray in jesus name you brought each one of these precious people here this morning and everybody who's watching on the live stream i declare that jesus christ is lord just declare with me jesus christ is lord and he's king of kings and he's coming soon amen you know, his kingdom is coming. You know, even the events that are happening right now in Israel, what's all that about? It's because the king is coming soon. Amen. The king is coming soon and he's going to come there. Amen. Literally, geographically, isn't that true? If, if we take the word of God seriously, the king of kings, Yeshua HaMashiach, is literally going to stand on that mount of olives right there. That is awesome, you know, and so we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we need to pray for all the people over there, pray for everybody, every kind of person, because I don't want to get, uh, on the one hand, I don't want to get too political, I don't want to, I don't hate Arab people or Palestinian people, God forbid, we want Jesus, we want everybody to receive Jesus, amen, everybody to receive Jesus. But we know that God has his hand on that nation. And it's a sign that Jesus is coming soon. Hallelujah. It was Derek Prince. Who's heard of Derek Prince? Derek Prince. I'm just going to... Derek Prince uh, uh, said this. He said, The greatest evidence that the Bible is real, the greatest, one of the greatest signs that the Bible is real, is the fact that the Jewish race... A race that's existed since antiquity, that the Jews are, are still existing and that they're back in their land. That is one of the greatest evidences that the Bible is real. Just look at the Jewish people. But praise God, the kingdom is coming. So let's get into the Word of God. Let's go to Matthew 10, verse 7 and 8. If you've got your Bible or if you have it on your phone. And it says this As you go, say go. Go. As you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and cast out demons. Freely you have received, and freely give. Okay, so, 
It says this, preach, say it, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Preach, say it, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And what is the word preach? Okay, it doesn't mean to give a dry lecture or a dead message. The word preach does not mean to give a, a dry academic lecture or a dead message. The, the Greek and the Hebrew uh, meanings of the word preach means to, it means to declare. Say declare. 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 Come on, lift your voice and say declare. 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 It means to declare, to release, to herald. Okay, a modern, uh, like a modern word you could maybe use, similar, would be like to activate, to, to release and a herald. Now, you can't declare anything of God, you can't release anything of God unless you've had revelation of it. Does that make sense? Okay, would it be okay to turn this projector off? Oh, thank you. Lamed. Yeah, being blinded by the light. So, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. How am I to declare, release, herald, and activate the kingdom of heaven? I need to have been in the presence of God. Okay, I can only release that. Uh, that you know, it's like Peter's shadow healed people. Why did Peter's shadow heal people? Come a bit closer. It's because he was overshadowed himself by the presence of God. Okay? Does that make sense? We have to be in the presence to release the presence. Okay, let's let's go for a few things. I hope I'm not losing anybody. Kingdom of heaven. Say kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. So what is the diff is there a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God? They're the same, but there is a difference in the terminology. The kingdom of heaven is the realm of God. It's his atmosphere. It's where he abides. Okay? It's his dwelling place. The kingdom of God is where the government the government and the rule of God is established. And in terms of the devil and demons and sickness and death, it's where the government and the rule of God is enforced. Just go on, give it a stamp like that. Enforced. You've got to enforce the kingdom of God over the devil. you got to not tolerate the demons. When demons try to bring sickness into your life, try and bring oppression into your life, you're going to enforce the kingdom of God. Enforce the kingdom in Jesus' name. The, the word kingdom means dominion of the king. Dominion. Dominion of the king. What is the first commandment instruction that God gave the man? Have dominion. It means take responsibility and rule in his name and, and bring the government of heaven in our sphere, think of it in your home, so that your home is not a home of chaos and disruption and stress. Your life, ruling your own spirit. Ruling your own spirit means that I'm going to bring the kingdom of God to bear in my own emotions. I'm not going to let chaos and stress rule in me. I'm going to refuse that spirit of fear. I'm going to speak to that spirit of fear and say no and I'm going to enforce the kingdom of God in my circumstances but I'm going to bring the kingdom of God and its peace in my home with my children I'm not going to enforce it with my children like that I do that with the devil but with people with my family in my sphere of influence I'm bringing the peace of the kingdom now in terms of the expansion of the kingdom through the gospel we are preaching and, and saying, declaring, releasing and activating the atmosphere and the realm of God because we ourselves have been in it. 
We have been, it's when we've been in the upper room, it's the church that's lived and abided in the upper room. And that is the Pentecostal pattern. That is the Pentecostal pattern. It'd be a church in the upper room, it's like a rhythm in the upper room, into the realm of God, into the realm of the Spirit. And then out from that place to release it and declare it. And what is the result? The supernatural happens. The sick get healed. Now, cleansing the lepers, what does that mean in modern Britain? It means people who are terminally ill get healed. It means that cancer, stage four cancer. You say the word cancer, everyone gets afraid. People are afraid of cancer. I want to ask you, which is the name that has the greater reverence, the greater awe, the greater respect, the greater honor, the greater weight, the greater glory, the name of Jesus Christ or the name cancer? The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. We, years ago, we, we were uh, attending a church and we were kind of making friends and it was a nice place. And one of the leaders announced from the front and said, we've got to be tough in life. There's problems and one in, one in three people get cancer. Then he looked around the room and we looked at each other and thought, this isn't the place for us. Because I'm one, I'm not afraid of cancer. Two, I don't believe for it. I believe in Jesus. I fear that name. I honor that name. So the word of God says here, when you're in the kingdom, when you're in the atmosphere of God, when you're in the Holy Spirit, you go from that place, you're going to heal the sick. You're going to see people terminally ill cleansed. Amen. Amen. You're going to see people terminally ill completely set free. People who've been given a death sentence. I'm telling you, people, you, you've got to start thinking different for the kingdom to manifest. Do, you actually be, do we actually believe that is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Yeah. Has Jesus changed? No. Has the church changed? No. The, church, the, the church has got it thinking all the wrong way around. Yeah. So, we've got to start thinking like this. Where I go in my life, I'm telling you, people who've been given a death sentence... By the, by the hospital, by the doctors, and thank God for doctors, not against them. But people who've been given a death sentence and told that they've got three months to live. Well, guess what? They're not going to die in Jesus' name. They're going to live. And yes, I'm there to say it. You're going to have a bit of a boldness where you, I'm looking at that camera and say, Yes, I'm, I'm crazy enough to believe it. Because if you start taking a stand and believing and speaking like this, people are not going to like it. Some people prefer death. Oh, just let them die. You're going to raise the dead. You're going to cast out demons. I, I know people personally who've raised the dead. I know people personally who've raised the dead. Obviously, our apostle, our spiritual father, has seen lots of people raised from the dead. I have a friend in, uh, back in Newcastle called Dougie, who's a, who's, a, who's a preacher. He was on the streets of Kampala, Uganda. A guy had dropped dead in the street. Crowd around him. And, and Dougie, he's a, he's a Newcastle lad like me, he, he got, he started praying in tongues over this guy, you shall live and not die, you shall live and not die, and declare the works of the Lord, and rebuke the spirit of death, now, live, 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 and die, sat up and live. And it was in the newspapers, he has the newspapers, because Africans are great, they just believe, even the sinners in Africa are nice, I like them. I love Africa. I've been there 10 times and I'm just white on the outside. But it was in the newspapers and, and a Zungo white man, they call it a Zungo over there, it'll be, it'll be white. And a Zungo raised the man from the dead. Hallelujah. Jesus hasn't changed. You're going to raise the dead, you're going to boot out, you're going to cast out demons. That word cast out. You don't cancel a demon out. You cast it out in Jesus' name. You boot it out in Jesus' name. You Eject it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you're in the supernatural presence of God, when you're in that realm of God, and you learn to live in that realm, you know, they, you, I showed some evangelism on screen. That was some evangelism. We're doing some evangelism in a few weeks' time. Who's part of the evangelism team? Who's part of the evangelism team? You can be part of that. Now listen, praise the Lord. You are going to have some evangelists here. You can ask, how can you do that? Do you have to be a crazy extrovert? Do you have to be a, a crazy extrovert to be an evangelist? No, not at all. But you do need to be a bit crazy. 
Because I've done lots of evangelism. I've seen evangelism before that sucks. And you know what? God, will, God praise the Lord. I'm not healing. Oh Lord, please stop. I just don't want to offend anybody, Lord, because I know Billy Graham's mother got given a tract on the street, okay? Brilliant. I've just seen lots of evangelism where you stand on the street like a lamppost and you stand there in the middle of the brigade trying to hand out leaflets. And that, I look, I, I, God will use it. And this has the word of God on it. And yet what will happen is, you stand in the brigade all day, you feel kind of discouraged, and if you're really honest, you're a bit... Hope nobody from work sees me. Come on, let's be honest. And then you stand there and people walk down the street and they see you with leaflets and they go like that around you. Okay, look, I'm not knocking tracks, okay, I'll leaflets. But Jesus didn't say, go into the world and have great conversations. I've done, I've done thousands. I've, I've evangel Literally, we have evangelized thousands of times. And I've been around a lot of evangel ministries that evangelize. How was it? We had good conversations. He didn't say, I mean, look, good conversations, fine. He said, go, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast the demons. How on earth do you do that? You have to get a bit crazy. Listen, if you came to church and everybody now wants to drink a bottle of vodka, and by the way, I'm teetotal. I don't drink alcohol. I don't do. I don't dr do drugs. I don't smoke. I, I, I'm safe. I used to do all that. In my past, if I drank a lot of alcohol, I used to act crazy. What about you? Is there anybody here? If you had a lot of alcohol in you, you you became crazy. Can anybody say that was you? Has anyone experienced that? You 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 know you, you're quite a shy person, maybe. But once you've had a lot, you, <laughs> you're all laughing. Once you've had a good skin full in you, and you've, you've down a load of beers or whatever, and you've had some wrong spirits in you, you don't care. There you are. You, you, you think you're the best dancer in town. You think you're John Travolta or something. You're doing the funky chicken, and the next day you're like, goodness me. How do you, get, how do you evangelize? You get, listen, theologically correct. You have to get blasted drunk on the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the key to evangelism. Get blasted drunk on the Holy Spirit. How? We're going out in a few weeks' time. You need to set your alarm. Get up in the morning. Put your worship music on. Get in the presence of God. Get in the presence of God. Get your inhibitions free. Come here for 10 o'clock and we'll be worshipping in the presence of God. Well, that is how you evangelize from out of that. Okay? And you'll, you'll do some crazy things. Uh, hallelujah, I'll just end up telling loads of stories. I mean, yeah, we, we did it from here once. We, we were here on a Saturday morning in the presence of God. We went out, we were in the, the one-stop shop. We had a word of knowledge. I went in the one-stop shop. I saw somebody. I had a word of knowledge for them. I started ministering to them. I felt drunk in the spirit. The owner of the shop came and says, sorry, you can't do that in here. I just says, not a problem, God bless you. The whole earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Kept on ministering. This lady had a frozen shoulder. Prayed for her, shoulder got completely healed. Led the both of the Lord. You know, normally I'd be like, subconscious, can't do this, limited. We've got to just be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. You need filled with the Holy Ghost every single day. So we preach, we release. We activate, we declare that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand because you're saturated in it. Amen. Do you understand that? You get saturated in the atmosphere in the kingdom of heaven. And now it's at hand because you're there. Now you are going to enforce the kingdom of God. Amen. So don't listen to the devil telling you you're an extrovert. An introvert. An introvert. You're an introvert. You're an extrovert. Who cares? You know, you just get over yourself. You just, uh, we're bringing the kingdom. This is why the Lord's Prayer starts with worship. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Matthew 6, 9 and 10. Our Father. And, and, and by the way, I fear God. I reverence God. Okay? I'm talking about being drunk in the spirit. I'm not talking about, be, I'm not talking about sinning. This is being drunk in the spirit. 
Don't be drunk on wine. That leads to debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit. And then one leads to being an idiot. It leads to being in sin. On the book of Acts chapter 2. People thought they were drunk. You need to be so filled with the Spirit. For, for the work of God. In, in, in for your family. For your relatives. And when you're in the workplace. Wherever you are. Our Father. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. When we're worshippers, the Lord's prayer starts with worship. When you're a worshipper, His kingdom's going to come. The kingdom of heaven's going to be at hand in your life so that you can enforce the kingdom of God. Is there anyone here you could do with them doing some enforcing? Amen. Ma Matthew 4, 23, 24 says, And Jesus, Matthew 4, 23, 24 Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every kind of sickness and every kind of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Hallelujah! Is Jesus still the same today? Yes. And Jesus said in John chapter 14, The works I do, you do also. And greater works than these shall you do, because I've gone to the Father. The apostles, the early church did these works. Is that correct? Yes. And, and, and Peter wrote in his epistle that we have like precious faith. We have like, we have the same quality of faith. We have like precious faith. Nowhere does it say in the year 200 uh, on a Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock this stuff stops. That's a lie. Okay? And we'll talk before we can mention again about why there are reasons why there are blockages to the Holy Spirit in the church. But I want to look at how we can unblock. I want to look at the flow. So, the gospel of the kingdom Jesus preached here the gospel of the kingdom. What is the gospel of the kingdom? Okay, any ambassadors here today? Any kingdom of God ambassadors? Yeah. Are you an ambassador yeah. of the kingdom of God? Yeah. The gospel of the kingdom is that God is going to come in his presence and be with his people. Amen. So you could meet somebody on the streets of Hare Hills of East End Park and you're bringing the presence of God to that person. You know, uh, God is you no know, God in history in the bigger picture is bringing the time of the Gentiles to a close. The time of the Gentiles is soon coming to a conclusion. Amen. Amen. We, <laughs> praise God, we Gentile believers have been grafted into the covenant. Amen. That's awesome. God is choosing a people from out of the Gentiles. That is nearly coming to a close. You can meet a drug addict in Hare Hills. You can meet a drug addict in East End Park. And God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of Israel, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, is ministering through you to reach that drug addict who's a Gentile and say, that person's being grafted into the covenant today. Isn't that awesome? Hallelujah, being adopted, being brought into the covenant. And that person's going to know what it is to know the true God. That I, the gospel of the kingdom is my kingdom, my presence is going to come and be in your life. And I'm going to be with you and I'm going to be your God and you're going to be my son. You're going to be my daughter. And the gospel of the kingdom is saying my government is going to be established in your life. So this person who's never grown up with a father from a broken home, who's full of rejection, addictions, who's made wrong choices, broken family, broken everything. The, the gospel of the kingdom to this person is saying, I am coming into your life with my presence. I'm establishing my government in your life. I'm going to eject fear from your life. I'm going to eject chaos and disruption and the open spirit out of your life. And, and the power of the gospel and the anointing is going to deliver you from demonic oppression, from addictions, from a life with no purpose, no identity. That leads to poverty. That leads to nothing. And that's the gospel of the kingdom of sin. East End Park, the gospel of the kingdom. And then I'm going to prophesy. East End Park. That's East End Park there. We prophesy you. The gospel of the kingdom. Burn the tops. We prophesy. 
the gospel of the kingdom. Hair hills, we prophesy the gospel of the kingdom over leaves. We prophesy the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and the kingdom of God will be established. Why? Hallelujah. In previous revivals, this city has seen revival. This city saw Pentecostal revivals in the 20th century under the Jeffrey brothers. Under, oh goodness, I forgot the names. Oxford Place Mission on the Hedgerow was full seven days a week with revival. Why? Because there was a people, it's not rocket science, a people who prayed and got hold of God who went to the upper room in this city, went to the upper room and took God into the atmosphere of the kingdom of heaven so that the kingdom of heaven was at hand in this city in the 1920s. And then the kingdom of God got established and the devil got put down in this city in that time. People, blind eyes opened in the city, deaf ears opened, the lame walked, the cripples, and the, the lives of people were transformed in this city. Because people went to the upper room to get into the atmosphere of the kingdom of heaven so it could be at hand to then release the gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of God in the city of Leeds. Hallelujah. And he's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. Hallelujah. He's going to do it again and he's going to use you. Because I am looking at a room of sons and daughters of the living God. I'm looking at a people. You're like God. You're like God. Because you're God's son. You're not God's, you're God's daughter. I mean, come on. you got to admit. Well, am I like the devil? No. Are, are you? Yeah. Are you like the devil? No. Yeah. No. I'm not like the devil. Yeah. I'm like God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm God's child. Yeah. I'm God's son. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Say glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Will not be seeker sensitive. Hallelujah. Be Holy Ghost sensitive. Notice this in Jesus' ministry. Four things were taking place. Jesus did this. He preached. He taught. He healed the sick. And he cast out devils. He preached in that he released the kingdom of heaven a hand. Then he taught. Paul said this, my preaching is not in word of wisdom, but in a demonstration of the spirit of power, that your faith may rest on the power of God, not on the wisdom of man. Then he said, we do teach. Yes, we do teach. Well, first of all, we release the kingdom. Jesus preached. Then he taught. Then he healed. And he cast out demons. Four things Jesus did. The modern church preaches motivational, seeker sensitive messages on how to be a better you. With no power and no presence. And that is changing in Jesus' name. Amen. That is changing. Yes. Jesus said this in Matthew 12, 28. If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. The one, this is a powerful scripture. It says this, the evidence that the kingdom of God is being manifested in a place is that demons are being cast out. The fact that demons get cast out, what happens in a deliverance? What happens then? It is a clash of kingdoms. Say, clash of kingdom. Clash of kingdom. I want to see a kingdom clash. I want to see a kingdom clash. I want to see the dominion of darkness, the kingdom of the devil, Bump into the kingdom of God. Because I know who's going to come off worse. I know who's going to be defeated. Because Satan is defeated. Satan is dethroned. Satan is disarmed. Hallelujah. He ain't got a throne. He's the prince of the power of the air. He's like a fly. He's got no throne. I mean here we are. We've got a seat to sit on. He's got nothing. Not a taken off him. You know like at school when you pull a chair out from under someone like that and they fall on the ground. Yeah. Satan ain't got nothing to say on. Amen. He's Amen. Disarmed. Jesus. disarmed. Yes. Hallelujah. Destroy. Amen. Glory to God. The kingdom of God is entirely supernatural. Go to John 3 verse 1 to 3. And this is a scripture you probably read a million times. I hope I'm not to run too fast for translation. Thank you. Hallelujah. 
Uh, I mean, I've, I've got to, I have to learn to speak better English. Coming from where I come from. Right. Now, when you read scripture, look at the text and read it. I know that sounds obvious. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. The word sign there is the word simeon, and it means supernatural power. Right. Can we agree? Nicodemus is coming to Jesus and saying, Jesus, we know you're from God because there's supernatural power in your, in your ministry. Is that correct? Is that a correct application of the text? Is that biblically completely correct? Yes, it is. It's correct. Now, okay, praise God. Now notice he says, we know you come from God. Who's the we? Who's the we? Nicodemus and who else? Pharisees. The people who hated him wanted to kill him and nailed him and had him crucified. They knew he was from God. I mean, how insane is that? Why fight somebody when you know they come from God? That's not a good idea. That's called fighting God. Don't fight God. So they said, we know you're from God because you've got God's supernatural power all over your life and all over your ministry. Is that true? That is essentially what the text is saying. Right. Verse 3. Just read the first couple of words. It says, Jesus answered and said to him, say, Jesus answered. Jesus what did he answer? What was he answering? What was he replying to? Let's say we've got a, a dialogue here, two people. Jesus, Nicodemus. Jesus, we know you're from God because you're healing the sick, you're casting out demons, you're raising the dead, you're making the blind see. Jesus answered. What's he answering? What's he answering? What he's just said. Did Nicodemus come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I want to know how I can go to heaven when I die. Amen. Jesus answered and said, this is how you go to heaven when you die. You must be born again. Amen. You with me? Are you following the text? Now, please, if there's anybody watching this online, I will absolutely clarify you must be born again to go to heaven when you die. There is a heaven, there's a hell. There's two places people go when they die to go to heaven or hell. If you're not saved, you're going to hell. You get saved. But in this, in this context, what's he talking about here? He comes and says, we know you're from God because the supernatural is on you. Jesus answers that. He answers that. And he says, unless you're born again, Hallelujah. Most assuredly I say to you, unless you're born again, you cannot see, you cannot have revelation of the kingdom of God. What's the kingdom of God? It's the enforced rule of God. It's the release of the kingdom of heaven, of the atmosphere of God. It's the release of miracles, signs, wonders, healing the sick, raising the dead, making the lame walk, cleansing the terminal. That's the kingdom of God. Jesus said to him, this guy said, we know you're from God because you're doing that. Jesus is saying back to him. Jesus is saying back to him. Unless you're born again, you can't even begin to understand this. That's being born again is meant to bring you into the supernatural. Why is the church so full of unbelievers that won't believe in the supernatural? Maybe a lot of people are not really born again. Now later on in John's Gospel chapter 3 he says, you know, as Moses lifted up the serpent, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. And for God so loved the world that whoever pleases in him should not perish, have everlasting life. Amen. 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 That's the truth. Everlasting life also begins now. He starts off and he's saying, this guy's saying, we know you're from God because you're moving in healings, miracles, signs and wonders. He answers that. And says, unless you're born again, mate, you can't even begin to understand it. People who get offended at the supernatural can't receive it. It's because it's a struggle with the Holy Spirit. And I'm bringing this to a close. Look, 
I touched on this earlier. How on earth are you even going to begin to move in this? And we, we are called to reach the lost. And we're not despising the day of small beginnings. Please hear me. And by the way, we're not despising giving out tracts. Okay, we're not. Please hear me. People have been saved by tracts. It's, it's got the written word of God. But Paul said, you're a living epistle. So how do you go beyond to the next level? How? You need the Holy Spirit. Because naturally you cannot do it. You cannot. So just get over that. Just get over the fact that you cannot do it. You can't make yourself extrovert enough and a good communicator enough to go out and win souls and heal the sick and cast out demons in modern Britain. You cannot. It's not possible. You need to encounter God. You need to be soft, filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to be completely dependent on the Holy Spirit. You know, um, we've heard this scripture, haven't you heard this? If anybody's in Christ, he's a new creation, the old is gone, the new has come. Yeah. Have you heard that? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Now I love this. There's a bit of a parallel in the Old Testament. It is a Samuel speaking to Saul in 1 Samuel 10.6. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you when you will prophesy and be turned into another man. Did you catch that? Yeah. If anyone's in Christ, now it says if anyone's in Christ, the word, the title Christ means the anointed one. When you get into the presence and you get into the reality of Christ, you become another person. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you become as another man, as another woman. It doesn't matter what your personality type is, who cares? You're saturated in God. You become as another man, as another woman. Hallelujah. You become clothed with power from on high. I tell you, you become the finger of God. Jesus said, if I by the finger of God cast out demons, that's an expression. You become clothed in power. You become the finger of God. Hallelujah. You oof to the devil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said, look, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This is all about dependency on the Holy Spirit. Dependency on the Holy Spirit. Complete and total dependency. And next weekend, our Pentecostal weekend, we, we just, we want, we need an encounter with God. Amen. I need an encounter with God. And you know, if you're here and you think, well, there is a, a message that accompanies the preaching. We are called to demonstrate the Spirit of God to people. Then our message carries power. What is our message? Our message is basically this. It is the cross the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and repentance and turning in faith to Him. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 15, 4. He said, I've delivered to you first of all that which I also received. Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Jesus it said of Jesus, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. So we are called to demonstrate the Holy Ghost and power. We've got, we're so run out of time, we've got to stop. But I, 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 I think of it like this. It's a mindset. When we went into that market on that Saturday, we could have been... Walk around the market, go to the store holders and give out leaflets. I'm not knocking that. Look, if that's where somebody's at, please feel free to do that. But there comes a point where you become the leaflet. Because you carry the spirit. And you can just go up to a person go, and just start speaking to them and say, I, Do you know what? I, 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 I just feel something on my heart. I was praying earlier. And I felt this way. Can I pray for you? I ask people, do you, do, you, do you ever pray? Most people do. Have a conversation and then just start ministering and start manifesting and releasing the Spirit to them. Start releasing the Spirit. Start bringing the word knowledge. I remember meeting a Muslim 
and he had the full Muslim clothes on, the, 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 the little uh, white hat thing and the, the white gown. He's very argumentative, very angry with me. And I said, God help, give me a word of knowledge. And I said, I feel the Holy Spirit has something for you. And he, he looked at me with scorn. And I said, no, no, no. I, I feel that your family back home have arranged for you to marry a girl, arranged with her family, a young lady. And in your mind, in your head, this is the right thing you should do. But your heart said something else because there's another lady that your heart loves. And you're, you're trapped between your, your head and your heart and your life. And this angry Islamic guy with all the full kit on, his face just crumpled and he put his head down like that. He put his head down. And I went, and you're facing the same struggle right now with the Lord Jesus Christ. Your head is arguing, but your heart is burning. And I'm here to tell you today that Jesus loves you. He's the Son of God. And I believe you're going to come to a place in your life. And this is how you get saved soon. Sometimes I'll lead people to the Lord there and then, or I'll tell them, this is how. Tonight when you go home, you lie on your bed, you just talk to him. Lord Jesus, if you're real, come in my life. And I shook that man's hand and he walked, we walked off. That was a power encounter with the, 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 the power of God and the word of God coming together. And we could talk loads and loads of stories like this. But, you know, the kingdom of God is powerful. Thank you, Jesus. The kingdom of God, I'm declaring the kingdom of God is here in power today. The kingdom of God is here in power today.